there's always a first time for everything and it's my first time making a pair of jeans for myself and let me tell you something anything you put your mind to you can do it because I did and I'm just going to let you watch it for yourself because it was indeed a true sewing journey let's rewind to this time last week I've got this denim fabric here three and a half meters dark blue denim it has no stretch in it and I'm going to be using the ultimate jeans sewing pattern by sew over it this video is going to be done using lots and lots of prim tools in the sewing process of my jeans fabric because i have lots of hardware that would need to be added to the jeans they're from prim and this video is sponsored by prim as well and i'll be sharing with you all the prim tools that i will be using to make my pair of jeans <laughs> I um, cut out a size bigger just to make sure it fits right and I've cut out the I've cut out the trouser legs what I did really was join just the front and back leg just to make sure it fits these are called um and um, they're called tailor tacks because um, I don't have any carbon paper like carbon transfer paper where I can make the marks for the pockets so I just use tailor tacks to make the marks for where the back pocket would go. And I like the fit. It's a proper mum jeans style trouser. And that's what I'm going for because I have never been able to find mum jeans that fit. Um, they either don't go past my thighs or they're just too big um, at the waist. Like the, there's a big gaping hole at the back of the like at the waist right at the center back because the waist my body's not like I don't have an everyday body <laughs> it's not regular so um I have to tailor these things based to based on my body type and my, my body size I'll just unpick the unpick the stitches there because they're like basting stitches you can see the gaps in between each. can you see the gaps yeah they're not they're not like proper stitches I just did that to hold it together and try out the trousers. But I like the trouser leg, it fits nicely and we're just gonna take it from there. It's a sin to go at night Blessing play bed in the daytime Goosebumps rise at night and settle back down at sunrise Guide the cord at noon And say you'll be back soon Tut tut, no worries Please get back early Head out with champagne and dresses And let's get curly Tut tut, no worries Please get back early Head out with champagne and dresses And let's get curly some booze for your teenage ground Running from pub to club like bloodhounds From 10 to 6 a.m. And no one knows how to start them Hold the drinks I want And help the one who's gone ta, -ta no worries Please get back the pocket bags and the coin pocket it's gonna have po coin pockets before I switch over to my top stitching thread I need to make sure that everything I'm going to top stitch is ready and prepared I would need to create a design on the pocket 
I want to go fancy with it, but I don't know yet. So I'm going to look online to see if I can get some inspiration because I just don't want to do something basic. Well, she says when she doesn't even know what she's doing. Anyway, um, before I do that, I'm going to just fold over this long piece here. One end is um, overlocked and the other one isn't. So th I think the purpose of that is just to minimize bulk. So you're basically split, splitting into three parts. And there we are. pattern I'm working with um, it was recommended to use top stitching needles so I'm going to use a top stitching needle just for the top stitching and I'm going to use top stitching thread the top stitching thread just needs to go to the top like at the top of the machine I don't need to wind the bobbin using top stitching thread I am going to adjust the stitch tension. I'm going to make these longer. Okay, it's starting to show stitches. Keep going. A bit longer. 3.5, 3.5 mil. No, no, no. Get the stitches to look nice. Hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a look through the book to see if I would find any tips for making top stitching look better. I'll be back. I finally found the solution to the problem. It says to make sure that, um, so the heavier the thread, the higher the, it requires more needle tension to make sure that there's a balance in the stitches. So I'm going to increase my stitch length and it says as a rule of thumb to use stitches that are around four millimeters. So I'm gonna go back with a four millimeter, um, four millimeter stitch length. And it also says um, that if you don't have top stitching thread, you can like double up the, the spool. So if you have like two threads running at the same time, you can get that same top stitching effect. Let me show you. So if you have that there, you'll be able to get the same effect. So I'm gonna put this away. And these look proper and these don't. This looks like a straight, a straight line in my, like in my eyes. And I think the middle one is the best of them all. I might just be tripping, but... So I'm going to use two threads to do this. That's it from the right side, that's it from the wrong side, and it's balanced, so... I'm just going to use double thread. Um, forget about the top stitch thread. Back to our tailor tax. Shine and turn my life back I just be shining bright Yeah, 
I feel quite proud of myself right now. <laughs> I've completed the back pockets. I'm about to enter the part that I do not like, fly zips. They're not my thing. I think I'll do well with them if I do it with a clear head. This section that I'm about to enter, it has seven pages for the zip. I need to be fully awake and I just don't want to be stressed out. So I'm gonna go, turn off, go to bed and after work tomorrow, I'll continue. It's been good. <laughs> I'm quite proud of myself, I must say. This cup of tea is going to be much needed for the project ahead, but it's a new day. <laughs> well, new evening, because I'm back from work. I have had dinner, I've got my cup of tea, and I'm just going to get cracking. I currently have this zipper that I have, I've got from Prim. It's an 18 centimeter long zip, and um, it's also made, it's actually denim, denim fabric. Tack the zip onto the placket. So now the, the zipper tape is actually invisible now, which is amazing. So now um, this looks okay. This is the nerve wracking bit for me, making sure that I do not hit the zipper teeth whilst closing up this part, this crutch, this very central bit of the crutch. Um. I also need to make a beautiful, neat top stitch that would go round to the top there. So I might have to actually draw it out with her. Okay, so the machine's been skipping stitches and that's not a good sign. So I have to unpick these stitches and start fresh. I don't know, I've just, I've just ruined it. Let me show you what's happened. I was just taking a video just to show you what I've done. And it turns out that I forgot to on, like, I forgot to move this flap out of the way. <sighs> Love you. to open this thing. Sorry. 
Life is gonna be great. because I cheated. I say I cheated, I didn't actually cheat, I just woke up super early. I felt bad for messing up my projects yesterday. Tackle the zipper and then I thought, do you know what, let's just do a little bit more since I was a bit too early to go to work. I have stitched the inseams, so the internal one where you've got the crutch. I top stitched it as well. I have also done some bar tacks. Bar tacks are not that hard. They're not as hard as I thought they would be. I just had to reduce the um, stitch width and stitch length. So I tried a few um, tests once before I did the real thing. It says to do them about, I think about like five millimeters, five millimeters long, yeah, really narrow. Bar tacks are done, side seams are stitched up. All that's left is the waistband and the, so the belt um, loops and the hem. I feel like I've made a lot of progress. I just need to wear it just to see if it, if it sits nicely, if I need to make any adjustments, because once I get the waistband on, I can't do any, well I can, but it's just gonna take a lot of um, work. So I'm gonna give it a try, moments of truth. It's okay there, but at the back, look at that. There's a bit of a gap there. And this is, um, I'd say about three centimeters need to get taken in. But I like the way it fits around my thighs. It's not tight at all. Oh, I can't, I can't wait to wear these. I like like this, you see this gaping hole, that's, that's uh, as a result of my um, backside and that's always an issue I have with store-bought trousers. They normally fit and then at the back here, they, there's just a big, can you see my hand can get in there and that's just not good. <laughs> Since I have the opportunity to make the adjustments, I might as well just get on with it, right? At this point, I need to iron on some interfacing. I get really concerned about inserting interfacing to denim <laughs> because of how chunky and how thick it is. But I guess um, my way of managing it is by making the, the interfacing slightly narrower than the waistband because interfacing is needed at the end of the day. I have a video here on my channel on choosing interfacing. Check it out. I'll actually put it in the dis description box below. I folded over 1.5 centimeter. That's a seam allowance really. So you just fold it over and press it in place. This is really useful. <laughs> and uh, cause I can press over this. And what I do is I put this here, measure out 1.5 centimeters and press over it. It helps me a lot. This 
this might be right Either you feel it or you don't Might give it a try, yeah Our bodies collide Baby, you're everything I want Let's give it some time, yeah Somebody told me I should hit and run But they don't know, they don't know, they don't bar tacks we do not need our top stitching thread so I've gotten rid of the second um, thread that I use for my top stitching we need zigzag stitches and then we want the length to be between 0.2 and 0.4 the width to be around 2 that's the lowest you can go but I have to test out the bar tacks um, on the belt loops because these are quite narrow and when you fold them over it's really chunky so I want to make sure that uh, my machine can handle the stitching. Um, it's a tiny little bit of fabric, so it's going to need a bit of help. So with mine, I have folded the piece of paper into this little block here. <laughs> I'm going to <laughs> lean this right at the very end so that it would help the machine think that there's a big chunky fabric um, already passing through. So that should help, well, I, I, she says, hoping that it works, let's see. Okay. I if you have to make um, back stitches when you do bar tacks. Interesting. <laughs> if you have, let me know in the comment section below. I do not mind the look of the first one. It looks fantastic. Here we are. That's the first. Can you see that? Well, I like it. I don't know what you think. The bottom hole needs to be 1.5 centimeters away from the edge. It has to start here, right here. This is the button that I'm going to be using and it's one that I have from Prim. Bar tacks to the rescue. I had a bit of a situation with my buttonhole stitching function tool or foot. And what happened is, um, what happened was 
this fabric is extremely thick. There are so many layers in there that um, the machine couldn't cope with creating buttonhole um, stitches. So I had to go back to the Bartax. That's why I said Bartax to the rescue. I just had to go with it. And um, I think I like the buttonhole. It's not perfect, but it's, it will do the job. This is dry now, so the next step would be to either use this special tool here <laughs> um, to open up the buttonhole, or you can use your seam ripper. I'm just going to use a seam ripper um, for the purpose of this video. The reason for adding the drops of fray check is to make sure that it doesn't fray when you rip through this fabric here. The button would have to go at a specific position to make sure you have this straight line at the top edge of the trouser. So I'm going to quickly um, identify where this should go. Um, if we have this here, there'll be, of ga there'll be a bit of gaping. So I think it's best to have the buttonhole probably there. So that by the time this goes through, the button would sit at the edge, like at the edge of the button hole. So I think I'm better off having the button above the zip. Let's just check what it would look like. So buttons there, there, pin it in place and then zip. I, I like the way it looks like this and um, the zip's not showing. Um, the button is right at the very edge of the, um, of the button hole. I very nearly gave up the decision to um, insert rivets to the pockets because the tool that I have here to, oh, to make a hole in the pocket here just couldn't get through the thickness of the fabric. I tried different things. <laughs> so I decided to go with my owl. Look at him, he's got a bad reputation. They've been looking at us, thinking we are too much. Look at me, I'm in a bad situation. Look at him, he's got a bad reputation. They've been looking at us. Mm. Why do I need to be good all the time? I'm wrapped around his finger, but he is mine. Don't care what they say, too late anyway. Why do I need to be good all the time? Got a bad history, but I want him anyway. So look at me, I'm in a bad situation. Look at him, he's got a bad reputation. But what about it? Why do I need to be good all the time? I'm wrapped around his finger, but he is mine. Don't care what they say, too late anyway. To be good all the time got to this point in the video I'm sure you can truly understand the reason why I feel really happy and the reason why I've got this huge smile on my face if you got value from this video if you learned a few things here and there from my journey let me know in the comment section below and please give this video a thumbs up because it really does help me out I really appreciate your time watching this video I have more of these types of sewing journey videos here on the screen for you to enjoy and I hope to see you over at those videos enjoy the rest of your day everyone and all the best take care bye